Hello and welcome to the Learning Square. Today we will talk about face recognition using PCA which is the principal component analysis. Now face detection and recognition is a two-way process in which you first try to detect the face and then recognize it. So essentially we are trying to create an intelligent system to be able to identify an incoming new image. The basic idea is to train a model to be able to identify features of a face which is closest to the features of the face which we already have in a database stored with us. So the basic idea is to treat each and every pixel as a vector. So if I have any face, suppose this is an 100 cross 100 image, then I would have 10,000 pixels for one particular image. And if I have 50 such images, then I would be dealing with 50 cross 10,000 pixels. The idea is to get a new image and to be able to map it to the closest face possible. So if you are looking at the feature vector here, then I would have 10,000 features for each and every image which are coming in because I'll be storing the intensity values of each and every pixel in one pixel. So this is very slow and takes up a lot of storage because generally the number of images is huge in a database. So the idea is to use PCA which is the principal component analysis to be able to reduce the feature vectors that we are talking about into a smaller dimension space. We try to construct a low dimension linear subspace that is best explains the variation in the set of faces images that we have. So what essentially is PCA? Let us first try to understand using this diagram. So suppose I have uh, a 10 cross 10 image and I have 50 such images. So 10 cross 10 would be 100 pixels. So my x1 to xm would be 100 intensity values I would have and I would have 50 such rows here for the 50 images that I have. Now since I'm talking about each and every intensity value this could range depending on the uh, bit resolution of the image that I have. So if I'm talking about an 8 bit image I would have values from 0 to 255 for all, all of these intensity values and these could be mapped to my Y which is basically telling me the uh, label for each and every vector which is associated with the intensity value. So this could be the first person in the database, second date person and so on for the 50 numbers that I have. Now the idea is to reduce this entire dimension because I ultimately I would be operating with say if this is 100 pixels and this is 50 I would have 50 into 100 so many features but now I'm trying to reduce the dimensions of this so my number of feature vectors is reduced to k which could be actually a linear combination of these ve feature vectors here. So my A1 could be a linear combination of x1 to xm. Similarly, a2 could be another linear combination of all these variables with different weights assigned to it. And the number of images would again be the same because I have to train this for n images and the labels also remain the same. So essentially what is PCA? It is a mathematical procedure that uses an orthogonal transformation to convert a set of values of possibly correlated m variables. So I could have possibly m correlated variables here to a set of k uncorrelated variables called principal components. So now I have k principal components here which are orthogonal with each other. So the correlation between them is zero. The number of principal components is less than or equal to number of original values. So this is a rule that k has to be less than or equal to m. k equal to m is the worst case when we already have orthogonal vectors here. The transformation is so defined such that the first principal component shows the most dominant feature or direction of data set. Then the next shows the next most dominant feature and so on. So what we are trying to say is that we are trying to make another, we are trying to map this m dimensional feature vector into a k dimensional feature vector and the first feature vector that I would have that is a1, it will have the maximum variance in terms of all these variables that I already have. So this is mathematically derived and we will get on to it later on. And the next a2 would be the next maximum variance of this linear combination of these principal vectors that we had. Dimensionality of original data set is reduced before calculation. First few principal components are selected and the rest are discarded. So we just reduce the dimensions and then we use first few of them and we discard the rest. 
So data reduction is basically that we have p variables defined by p or we had taken m here and we have a smaller set of k derived which are synthetic and composite variables. So this is how it is depicted. Now PCA is probably the most widely used and well known standard multivariate method for machine learning. So looking at the geometric rationale of PCA, we have the objects which are represented as a point cloud of n points in an n dimensional space with an axis for each of the p variables. So we have p variables and there is a point cloud of n points here. The centroid of the points is defined by the mean of each variable and the variance of each variable is the average squared deviation of the n values around the mean of that variable. These are the standard stats values that we have been using throughout in mathematics of high school. So this is the formula. So we basically take the mean here, xia bar is the mean and xim is the value of the particular feature vector that we are looking at at that particular instance. Now degree to which the variable are linearly correlated is represented by their covariances. So we are trying to find out the covariance between two variables. So essentially what we are doing here is we are trying to find out the correlation between these feature vectors. Now what is our objective is that we are trying to rigidly rotate the axis to this p dimensional space to a new position which are known as the principal axis that have will have the f uh, following properties. It will be ordered such that principal axis 1 has the highest variance, axis 2 has the next highest variance and so on till axis p has the lowest variance. Covariance amongst each pair of the principal axis is 0 that is that the principal axes are now uncorrelated. So if you try to visualize this suppose I have a variable x1 and a variable x2 and this is how my point cloud is distributed. We can say that these are correlated because there is a positive relation between the two. If you plot, try to fit a, a line here, we will be able to fit up a straight line here. So variable x1 and x2 have positive covariance and each has a similar variance. So you can see the mean of x1 is 8.35, mean of x2 is 4.91, these are plotted here. The variance of first variable is this much second variance is also this much and correlation with uh, sorry the covariance between these two is 3.42 which is a positive value. Now the first step would be that we would want each variable to be adjusted to a mean of 0. So what do we do? We subtract the mean from each of these values. So we subtract the mean value which we had from each of these values. The mean of x1 is subtracted from the x values, mean of x2 is subtracted from the x2 variables and this is how my new plot looks like. Now after this we are trying to compute the principal components. So essentially we are trying to f uh, look at new axes. So if you look at the PC1 and PC2 you can see that there seems to be no correlation between them. They have zero covariance. So PC1 has the highest possible variance which is 9.88. PC2 has a variance of 3.03 and these two have zero covariance because all the point cloud is now distributed in a scattered manner. There doesn't seem to be any correlation now. So what we've actually done is that PCA uses Euclidean distance calculated from the p variables as the measure of dissimilarity amongst the n objects. Then PCA derives the best possible k dimensions representation of the Euclidean distance amongst these objects. In practice nobody uses PCA with only two variables. The algebra for finding principal axis readily gen generalizes to p variables. So we, what we do is we can basically have PC1 in the direction of maximum variance in the p dimensional cloud, then PC2 in the direction of the next higher variance and so on. We can go on and the principal components so generated are basically orthogonal with each other that is the covariance amongst each other is zero. So each principal axis is a linear combination of the original two variables. My PC J basically is a linear combination of the original ones. So that is what I was saying initially. So I'm creating these A1, A2, A3 which are linear combination of X1, X2, X3 and so on till Xm with various weights assigned to each and every X values. The weights could be zero also. So it is a linear combination of variables. So if I have variable x2, variable x1, we have now shifted our axis to pc1, pc2 which are orthogonal variables, they are 90 degrees with, with each other and if you look at the graph from the pc1 and pc2 axis then 
the graph doesn't seem to have any correlation whereas x1 and x2 were actually having a correlation value which was high. If you actually look into the intricacies of the thing, PC1 is simultaneously the direction of maximum variance and a least square line of best fit actually for these variables. So if we take the first k principal components, they define the k dimensional hyperplane of best fit to the point cloud. Of the total variance of all p variables, PCs 1 to k represent the maximum possible proportion of that variance that can be displayed in k dimensions. That is the squared Euclidean distance amongst points calculated from their coordinates on PCs 1 to k are the best possible representations of their squared Euclidean distance in the full p dimensions. So we are trying to generalize this and get a result which is closest to the original data set with that we have. Using covariances amongst variables only makes sense if they are measured in the same unit. Now what happens is that suppose I have feature vectors wherein my x1 is ranging from 0.1 to 1 and my xm is varying from say 10 to 20 and maybe my x3 is varying from 100 to 200. Now if I try to model this then eventually what will happen is that the maximum weight will automatically be given to x3 and least weight will be given to x1 because the values of x3 are larger. So automatically while creating a, a weight vector here more weights will be assigned automatically to x3 here. So to be able to form a model in which no feature vector has undue advantage of the over the other what we try to do is we try to normalize all these values. So normalization would mean we would have to do something like this. We would have to subtract the mean variable from the original value and divide by the standard deviation of the variable. So this relates to the correlation values that we find out and correlation is generally it ranges to 1 only. So correlation could also be mathematically found out from the covariance using this formula. Now in the case of PCA what our first step is to actually find out the cross product of the matrix of the variances and covariances which is now basically the correlation amongst every pair of the p variables. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to find out the correlation between these two variables. So automatically this is the correlation that I would have for between x1 and x2. Now if we are looking at the digital form. Now if you are looking at these in the matrix notation then this you would have x transpose into x would give you the s value where x is the n cross p data matrix with each variable centered. So if I have x matrix like this my x transpose would look something like this and then we have to multiply. We already know that you know the, uh, there is a certain criteria by which multiplications between matrices can happen. So using that we manipulate this to be able to perform PCA on matrices. Now some of the diagonals of the variance covariance matrix is called the trace. So if I add these two up I would get the trace. It represents the total variance in the data. So my total variance is represented by here over as this and trace is always equal to the number of variables in case of correlation value. Now finding the principal axis involves eigen analysis of the cross product which you must have studied in mathematical terms. If I say s minus lambda times i and I take the modulus and equate it to 0, lambda will give me the value of the i.